Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do a full art setup and we're going to use my very new library which is called Essencia. This one I developed recently and I wanted to try it and do two full arches with it and see how it performs. I'm going to use this old case that you can download if you follow the link in the description and with this one I'm not going to use any implants, I'm just going to do wax up on ticks and, and change the design. For now I'm just going to set up the teeth in the right position. I'm going to use this as a rough reference but I'm going to free design in this case, I'm not going to follow to a T the, the pre-op. I tried to place them more or less in the correct position. Then I locked the, the back sphere and now I'll just bring them in. Something like this. And I'll start by doing the upper first. So I hide the lower and as always use the custom views to set up some quick shortcuts just to be faster and to help us do a faster setup. So we have the front view and the occlusal view and now we can begin. So let me know if you guys like this new library. Your opinion is so very important to me so let me know what you think. As always, I like to set up this side first, so we can do a symmetry copy to the other side. And to do that, I only want to do on the upper for now, so I go to expert mode. I select the upper arch, and we select the upper arch, and we go to the placement. Now we go to chain mode, and as you can see, they moved a bit. I antique all these boxes, I go back to simple mode. I do, I click and do until they go back to the previous position, this one and go back to chain mode and you come to the symmetry button and you click on the upper left part of the button where it says overall symmetry right to left and it copies this side to that side so now you go ok and as you can see this is a copy of this side but it's misplaced so now I only select this side of the arch and I go tooth placement and I select move all simultaneously and by doing that, I'm basically moving the f this uh, half arch all together, all in the same position as this side, and place it more or less in the correct position. I go OK, and now I go back to tooth placement for the upper full arch, and just tweak it. It's very important always to look from the sides because not not only it happens to me but I see happening to a lot of people where we kind of see only the full arch from the front and it looks good but then you come to the side and you see like the premolars facing forward and even sometimes the canine so always come here and check if they are looking vertical and not all misplaced like this it's like they are pointing forward Okay, it's, it's looking quite good now. And now we'll move on to the lowers. So here I'll use the chain mode just to help me place the posterior articulation correctly. So because I did this on the, the uppers, I'll also do on the lowers, which is just make them slightly shorter. So I have the right proportions in both of the arches. Now here I use the chain mode to start placing the correct occlusion. We need to have the mesial cusps of the lowers aligned to the embrasures of the uppers.
find the lower midline with the upper and I think it's easier if I go to simple mode and now we're gonna do the same that we did on the upper go back to chain mode go back to simple and do until they go back to the same position and copy the left side to the right side we get this half arch tooth placement move all simultaneously try to place it more or less in the same position although we always need to adjust it something like this now we go ok and we select again the lower arch and go to tooth placement make the upper transparent so we can see the occlusion distance from the upper Okay, so now we have a nice occlusion, a nice relationship between the lower and the upper. We'll go now to the next stage, which is freeforming. And here we're gonna try to adjust the occlusion without damaging too much the morphology. I'm going to free, adapt, and we're going to use... I like to start with the negative value on the uppers. Whenever I need to adjust occlusion, especially on full arches, I like to adjust it more on the upper because the patient won't be able to see as easily the occlusion of the upper uh, compared to the lower so whenever they open their mouth they can see the lower much more easily so I like to I like to preserve better the morphology of the lower so here I trimmed the uppers and I used the negative value just to split the adjustment between the two full arches so I don't do everything on one now I go to zero, they adjust the lowers like this. Going to adjust a bit the morphology on the uppers. And now I'm going to adjust it again on the lowers. We need to smooth the roots back just for the change of a stage. Now let's just adapt the occlusion again. So now we're gonna adapt the proximals like this and we go forward to the gingiva phase to do the base of the gingiva. We might come back to close some embrasures if they are too open. So now we select the change of a base. On this case, because this is just a, a test for my new library, it doesn't even matter if the change of a base is in the correct position. It's just to make the best possible full arch with this new library. Now at this stage, we're gonna pull the gingiva to close the embrasures as much as we can and then we use the teeth to close the rest.
So come to the back, make sure to bulk up the gingiv on the back. In any full arch you always need some thickness for strength, wherever is the material. And if you want to bulk up, the best area is in the, the palatal area. So now we need to make sure that the necks are symmetrical and they are more or less at the same height. Okay, now once you're happy with the gingiv and the papilla, we go to freeforming to close these small holes, but using the teeth instead of the gingiv. So we go to freeforming, and we're just gonna pull the teeth closer together. So like this, see everything is closed, and now do this on every single tooth. Make sure everything is closed and now we are going to we are going to adapt the proximals to zero and we're gonna adjust the occlusion again on the uppers. We merge the design and finally we're gonna do some change of the detailing to look more realistic. So go next. Now I'm just gonna change. Seems like this lateral is higher than this one. Just gonna pull up a bit. You can bring the grid forward. So if I place the centrals here, the incisal edge of the laterals are here. Now the cannons are more or less at the same height. But it seems like the tip of this cannon is a bit shorter than this. Like that. The laterals are almost the same. Now, to do a nice looking gingiva, first we need to smooth a bit these bumps. And now we need to make sure that the papilla is as bulky as the buccal volume of the teeth. happy with the volume of the gingiva. Now I'm gonna use the thin tool and I'm gonna make it the smallest size and I'll just contour the free gingiva. Now the roots. First I'd like to create some depressions between the roots of the teeth. Like that, and now we can actually create some 
increase the volume in these areas. A bit more on the canine. And now we smooth these grooves. We can use the anatomic tools to pull a bit wider if you want. Usually I like to create bone structure that usually we can see on the posterior corridor. We bulk up there a bit. Now we can do a bit of texture just by trading around the thin tool. Now we can do the frenum. Don't do too much volume on the front because it's going to be weird for the patient to feel that sharp transition. So just a, a small hint. Okay, so the upper is done. We're going to do the same on the lower. Basically it's the same. And creating the roots of the incisors because usually they are more pronounced than the uppers. So I have this because I pulled down the cannon a bit, so I'm going to have to adjust it again. And there you have it, a full art setup using my new library.